Welcome back. We are live with Eric from Airtight Games. Welcome, sir. How's it? Pleasure to be here. Dude, murdered soul suspect. Yes. What is going on in this game? <laughs> well, we start by killing the protagonist off in the first moments of the game. So right there, we're kind of going in a different direction with it. It's, uh, it's a supernatural detective thriller where we have the protagonist solving his own murder, trying to bring his killer to justice. This is so cool. So, you know, we're looking at the trailer, looking at footage, and we see some inkling of action, some inkling of, like, horror. We're running from other ghosts, but we're also doing detective work. We're using our ghost powers now, yeah. right? And yeah. it's like solving a crime with it. How much of this is an adventure game? How much of this is a stealth game, an action game? I think the, the core pillar of the product is uh, investigation. Mm -hmm. We have a really rich storyline with a lot of really interesting characters, and we use the investigation mechanic to really drive that story and let the players sort of discover it on, the, on their own. But on top of that, we have a really fun traversal system where we have you go from places to places and, and get to the crime scenes on your own. And then as a sort of spice on top of it all is the, is the combat, where we really emphasize that the dusk, which is the realm where you're in, is not a safe place to be. So the combat is, is against other ghosts. Do you have a ghost gun? What no. do you do? There are no ghost guns in our game. Uh, really what they are, are these demons are used to be ghosts, but they've been corrupted by this place. And now their, their only goal left is to devour other human souls. And uh, they're really powerful. And if you try to confront them head on, they'll kill you. So you have to use all of your abilities and your deductive reasoning to build strategies to kill them when they aren't expecting it. Gotcha. So. We're using some ghostly powers. We're seeing things like possession. Uh, you know, we've seen things like this with like Ghost Trick, games like Geist. How are the powers in Murdered a little different than those? <laughs> so, um, and that's one of the great things about ghost lore is it's sort of universal and you get it yeah. immediately. Uh, we use possession a little bit differently. We don't let you directly control the player because one of the things that we want the player to feel is, I need to think outside of the box. I need to go in a different direction with this. And so they, they aren't part of the living world anymore. And we really wanted to emphasize that fact. So when you possess people, you can look through their eyes, you can hear through their ears, but you don't usually have direct control of them. You can influence their thoughts a little bit, and you can malfunction some living world objects. But the goal is to force the player to think in a different direction to solve the cases. Gotcha. And what other kind of stuff are we going to be seeing in terms of abilities? Well, we show in this demo uh, your ability to actually reveal uh, memories that exist in the dusk and gather information from those. You can actually teleport around in the environment. Uh, and we've got a ton of other abilities that we haven't shown yet. Gotcha. So lead me through kind of what's happening here. So right now, Ronan has finally made it back to his investigation. In the heat of the moment, he thinks maybe I missed something. So I need to get back here, find the missing pieces, if any, and then pick up the trail of my killer. And so what, he's just seen, what you've just seen here is an introduction to a few of the characters who will play a critical role in the game. But as he launches off in the investigation, the first thing you're going to see are the dusk objects, these dusk vestiges that exist in the world. The dusk exists because of human suffering. Okay. So when someone dies or suffers some severe trauma, their imprint, their energy, leaves an imprint in the environment, which actually manifests as these sort of living world, these objects that now are in the dusk. Okay. Uh, ghosts exist in the same way, and their primary purpose is to solve their unfinished business. If they don't do that, then they become those demons that I was mentioning. Gotcha. So I would imagine uh, being a detective in a ghost world full of ghost people, ghost problems to solve, you're probably helping a lot of them. Yes, you will see a lot of other ghosts in the game. There's a lot of optional content. If the player wants to, they can go, they can take on other cases, they can learn a little bit about the town, a little bit about the characters who inhabit the town. And it fills in some of the blanks about who Ronan is. Cool. So what are we about to do here so in this investigation? What you're looking at right now is you're sort of getting a sense of what the crime scene is, uh, what's going on here. You saw that text floating in the environment. Mm -hmm. Ronan doesn't have access to a notepad, so he can't write his information sure. down. And so we use this visual to sort of represent his mind's eye. As he's working through the investigation, what do I need to do? What's my next goal? What do I need to be discovering here? The first place he's going to start in just a second here is with his own body. What better place to start, right? Sure. So as he makes sure that this is where he needs to go, he sees some other uh, clues over here that we'll get to into a moment. He's going to investigate. And in life, Ronan was an incredible detective. And he preserves that as he comes into the dusk. So the basic abilities that you're going to have as a detective of observation mm -hmm. will carry over once you get into the gameplay. Gotcha. And so we don't have a notepad. We Obviously, we don't have a weapon anymore. 
how much can we interact and influence objects in the real world? There is some limited interaction in the real world, um, but it's mostly about poltergeisting things and drawing people's attention. Gotcha, so here we're, we're figuring out how we died? Yes, well, we know how we died. Oh, yeah. We're just trying to make sure that we haven't missed anything. So as he plays this mini game, uh, in this particular instance, he's looking, he's getting a flashback of what just happened to him. Uh, again, it's sort of this whole, it's all mental, it's all yeah. in his head as he pieces it together. But that's sort of the baseline ability. It's one of the first things that you learn how to do. Okay. The next thing he's going to do as, as, the, as the demo continues is he's going to go over here and possess Stuart. And we're going to see a little bit of that possession gameplay that I was talking about. Cool. So he's going to hop into him, and again, he can't control Stuart directly, but he's able to look through his eyes. And so as he starts analyzing his notepad, he's going to try to find something that could be relevant to what he's trying to figure out. I love this. I love that you have to find what's relevant to you. Yes, exactly. That's very cool. In this instance, the victim's gun was the murder weapon. That gives you a little bit of insight know. about the killer. He, he didn't come here with a plan. He didn't come here intending to kill Rona. So that, that gives you some clues about the nature of who your killer is and what he's doing here. Gotcha. So he's going to continue on, and then now you're going to be able to hear in a, into a conversation that you wouldn't be able to hear otherwise. So this is interesting. So we're hanging out, we're listening. Do we hear conversations more clearly when we possess a member of that conversation? Yes, absolutely. When when they're when people are talking close, it's it's hard to understand they're saying. So to make sure that you get all the information, you actually I'm should hear through their ears. That way their focus is on what they're listening to and it gives you a better sense of what's going on. Now we have limited control over the people we possess. Correct. Uh, we can access we can access feelings. Uh, can we change their feelings? Can we change the way they're having their conversation? You'll see that in a little bit here. Once he gets done listening to this conversation, another ability the player has is to basically influence, in, a, in a some capacity, the way people act or the way they think about. So once uh, he figures out that they know a little bit about the case here, he's going to go over a witness who is so distraught by what she's seen, yeah. she can't articulate her thoughts to the police officer. So he's, okay. he's finished here, so he's gonna make his way over to the witness now. Tell me about the badge that we just earned. So the badge system is a way to reinforce good gameplay. Mm -hmm. We don't want the player to be punished for doing poorly, we want them to be rewarded for being do, doing well. Yeah. We wanna encourage them to continue on with the storyline, we don't want them frustrated in turning the game off and not coming back. Sure. So the badge nice. system is a way that if you do the investigation well, you'll get more badges and the reward system will earn you more experience for future upgrades. Cool. So as you can see here, he's influenced this woman. He's actually taken one of his own memories and put it into her head and gotten her to articulate what she saw. Wow. So now he has information that no one else has access to because she's so in shock by what she's seen. Now when you put memories into other people's heads, like right now we're obviously using that. She was there, it was something she already saw. We just yes. need her to be able to talk about it. Yes. What are you going to be able to do to people's heads when you're putting other memories into them? So again, we don't want the player basically controlling and doing living world things. So it, it works in a limited capacity. Okay. People with free will have the resist; they can resist it. But you can sort of direct them in, in little ways that you'll see as you play through the game. Cool. And so here we're obviously, this is all the relevant information that we found, the clues. Right, we're piecing it together now. So the first step was going, okay, let me make sure I know what the cops know. But uh, let me let me think about what I know that the cops don't know. And that was the witness statement you were able to get. So as he pieces it all together, he's, he's, he's going back over it again in his head. And now he knows that he needs to make it up to the fourth floor to continue the investigation, to go back to where it all started. Gotcha. So we're not uh, we're not hearing it here on the floor, uh, but I would love to know a little bit about the tone of the world. Is this is this more noirish? Is this more kind of modern? What kind of what kind of mystery story are we sure, telling? Sure, sure. So the the game takes place in modern day Salem, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. a, a fictionalized version of Salem, but gotcha. uh, it's inspired by that town. That's my way in. And we we're going for obviously kind of a, a creepy vibe in a sense. Um, Salem has got a really rich supernatural history, right? And the, and the way the town looks is really the perfect setting for the kind of game we want to build here. I mean, as you can see, the, the street is such a it's such an interesting place to look at already. Yeah, you've got like the old cobblestones mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get to the fourth floor. I am assuming, can we walk through a door? So here's the interesting thing about ghosts. Uh, Tell they're not me, really bound. what is the interesting thing about ghosts? They're not really bound, per se, to the uh -huh. physical world. So, mm -hmm. as you've already seen, he's passed through a bunch of things. Yeah. Exterior walls actually affect ghosts, though. Okay. That's because the citizens of Salem uh, actually christen the foundations they're building in our game. 
And what this does is it creates a supernatural barrier that prevents ghosts, uh, ghosts from freely entering and exiting. Gotcha. So we've jumped ahead a little bit and we're up on the second floor now. But as the goes back in the gameplay, you'll see that the player can pass through all interior walls. Okay. So the christening only affects exterior locations. Oh, that's really cool. So then once you're in there, you just go wherever you want. Yep, absolutely. So how do we get in when those when those doors are christened? So uh, you have to oh, create a breach in the barrier. Did I do that? Okay. Right. And so on the street, hey, you hey, saw Officer Stewart he open the door. That's yeah. his way in. Gotcha. But we use that as a basis for a lot of traversal puzzles right. in the game. Oh, this is doors closed. I, I don't have the easy way in anymore. How do we influence How do we this? get in? Yep, exactly. Gotcha. It all goes back to that. We really want the player thinking differently about the world. They're a ghost. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really important that they don't think about it like they're a person. They've got a different set of limitations and a different set of powers. Sure. Uh, you know, one thing that we always think of when we think about ghosts in these kind of suspense stories is a certain amount of telekinesis, mm -hmm. throwing things mm -hmm. around. Is that something where as we gain experience and we learn more about how to be a better ghost, <laughs> do we get that? You do get more abilities as you progress further into the game. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we were in kind of this weird witchy room. Yes. And uh, what was going on in there and what are we about to see? Whoa, hey. <laughs> hey, buddy. What are you about? So this is one of the demons that we were talking about. Okay. Uh, these guys are extremely dangerous. Uh, if you try to attack them head on, they, they're going to kill you. Wow. So what we really want is the player to be thinking about combat in a very methodical way, so they don't just run headlong into an encounter. Uh, they should use their abilities like pass through and possession and get around the enemies okay. and kill them when they're least expecting it. So. How do you wind up killing these things? They look pretty intense. So you'll see that in a second. <laughs> okay. Now these things don't have souls anymore. Right. So they're kind of like intelligent killers, but they're sort of husks, right? And so when they're least aware of it, their guard is down. And as you'll see here in a second, you actually get inside of them and tear them apart from within. Whoa. That's really cool. So I like this because there's definitely an element of, of planning and strategy here. Yes, yes. This is not something, I can tell this is not something where we're just gonna be surrounded by 80 of these guys. We're using buildings and environments as a puzzle yes. to figure out how to kill the one thing that's in there. Absolutely. It's interesting, our creative director mentioned, and I think it's a really good uh, analogy, is that in a sense, combat is a different type of investigation. Very cool. So you can see here, he's hopped in uh, a human and we're using possession in, in a combat scenario instead of an investigation scenario. Okay. While you're in living beings, the demons can't see you. So you can use them to get around them, navigate past that you wouldn't be able to get past otherwise. And then once you've done that, you can jump outside of them, use things like pass through and these uh, other abilities that you'll get over the course of the game. And what we're gonna show you here is a, another ability that you'll have. It's called uh, teleport. Okay. You can actually charge up uh, your energy and then silently move from one location to another. Very cool. Oh, so, okay, this is a different version of the demo. I'm sorry. You'll do teleport in just a second here. Okay. You can see that he's using hitchhike again to, uh, to, pass, uh, to uh, possess and kill. But as he, as he makes his way through the environment, he'll, he'll use teleport here in just a second. I love his walk. Here we go. Yeah. He's very confident. Uh, that's part of his character, too. Ronan, uh, in life, was he grew up on the wrong side of the tracks. He was a thief. His parents were thieves, okay. but he decided to go straight, and he became a cop with the Salem PD. And that life experience has defined who he is, and it actually affects how he investigates the, inv uh, the cases he's involved in. Interesting. So he's gonna make his way up to the fourth floor now, and now he's gonna be able to complete the investigation uh, that will lead him ho ho hopefully to where his killer's location is. Okay, folks, I need you to keep your distance from the scene. So, we're, uh, we're solving problems for ghosts here. Do we wind up taking on other human cases along the way as well? Do so, they kind of intersect that way? Sure, absolutely. The Ronan finds ways to help people as he makes his way through the game. Gotcha. And so some of the characters you're gonna help will definitely be ghosts, some of them will be human. Uh, he's a cop, right? So his yeah. natural instinct is I wanna help people and he does find ways to do that. I don't think that's gonna work, man. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Damn. That's not how it works. My mom gave me that gun. Yeah. <laughs> so is that is that that's the murder weapon, obviously, or maybe it's his weapon. So, uh, but yeah, you'll have to see. Yeah. The, this investigation will put the final pieces here. together. Gotcha. And again, we come back to that notion of, of Ronan's mind's eye. In this particular investigation, he's going to try to put the the order of the events uh, together. He's going to try to find the timeline that led to the situation. 
and you're going to discover things about Ronan or about this case that's going to take you in new directions, including why the gun is there on the ground. <laughs> this is awesome, man. This is definitely uh, something very unlike anything we've seen before, which is I, something I, so. I expect from you guys <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. Do you know when we're going to see Soul Suspect? It's coming out in early 2014. Excellent. Yes. Thanks again.